بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم این السلام علیکم ٹوڈے وی ول بی ڈسکسنگ سم تھنگ ویری کلوز ٹو مائی ہارٹ ایز اے مسلم اینڈ کلوز ٹو ایوری بڈیز ہارٹس اراؤنڈ دا ورلڈ ہو آر مسلمس ٹوڈے از ٹاپک از سم تھنگ دیٹ آئی بلیو دیٹ ایوری مسلم شوڈ ہیو ٹوڈیز ٹاپک از for the love and ishq of my prophet and our prophet may peace be upon him our final and last rasulullah the mercy for mankind today's topic is how important is this love and this ishq for our prophet for our iman as muslims But before we get to this interview, I'd like to ask all our viewers to please subscribe to our channel down below because this is Zan Khan and we're live. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and Assalamu Alaikum. Welcome to Zan Khan Live where everything is discussed. Today, the topic of the show is very close to my heart. Today the topic of the show is very emotional for me. It has something to do with my beliefs. It has something to do with my ishq. It has something to do with my religion. All of you know that today's topic is is ishq e rasul. And today we have a very special guest. Today's guest is a global spiritual teacher. He is a leading scholar in Tasawwuf and Sufism. He's one of the most prominent ulama of the Naqshbandi Nazamiya Tariqa. He has also received uh, ijaza from the great Sheikh Nazim Al-Haqqani. Today the guest of our show is Sheikh Noor Jan Mir Ahmadi. And he will be discussing with us Ishq Rasul and Deen Islam and how important is ishq for our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and our religion how important is that ishq assalamu alaikum sheikh nurjan this is zain khan it is a pleasure and honor to have you on our show wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh shukran zain thank you thank you for having us sheikh nurjan i'd like to get to our first question and a very important question How important is ishq e rasul sallallahu alaihi wa sallam for our deen and one's iman? A'udhu billahi min shaitan alayhi wa sallam ar rahman ar rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salam ashraf al mursaleen Sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad wa Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam madadakum wa nazalakum sallallahi wa sallam kareem ya khabib wa azim madad ya sallam ya sultan ilam ya shikhan ya khayz al daqistani sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya azim haqqani wa shikhan ya shikhan ya shikhan ya shikhan ya shikhan ya shikhan ya shikhan Alhamdulillah that our belief is that it is everything that without ishq rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam without love of sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam without muhabbat respect and ihtiram eh, there's nothing the, the the deen its foundation is built on the love of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the good character the akhlaq the the mannerisms the beauty and the muhabbat is all based on this ishq and this love and ihtiram our belief is tahzim an nabi sasim that when allah azawajal created us and asked that i created you to worship me the highest form of worshipness is tahzim an nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam to raise the magnificent honor 
and the status of Sayyidina Muhammad in our lives, in our community and upon this earth. Not that we raise the status of Prophet because it cannot be raised by, by insan like us, but our, to live a life of glorifying Allah and thanking Allah for sending us such a, a magnificent Prophet such a, a magnificent guide and beautific example for our lives. Shaykh, I'd like to get to a very important question. How could we unite the Muslim Ummah through the love of our Prophet and for our Prophet? Because obviously we as Muslims, we all love our Prophet Muhammad So how can we unite the Muslim Ummah on this, this point? Yeah, you unite. Uh, I don't know about unite. That's a immense word. That you unite is for Allah and I don't think it comes until the time of Sayyidina Mahdi alayhi salatu salam that the the reality of of that reality. I think that when people are dealing with their nafs and their ego and not willing to purify and clean themselves, uh, how can they come together? That ishq Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, love and muhabbat of Prophet sallam, and the the mafils, the zikr, and all of these practices break down all of these firqa, all these groups, all these barriers, and that they unite under the love of Prophet sallam to come. And uh, doesn't matter about their manhab, doesn't matter about w- what their differences are, but come together for the love of Prophet sallam. And that's what the tariqs and the, those whom follow only Allah, they're trying their best to do upon this earth, is to have, you know, mafils and celebrations of the life and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, at every moment, at every day. And through that love, people come together and to respect each other. Shaykh, how does the love for our Prophet وسلم, teach us to love one another? The love of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is what Allah orders for us. That only Allah come into our lives and they teach us from the secrets of Holy Qur'an that Allah is saying, if you want my love, if, if you're a person that wants my love, فَتَبِيُونِي requires ihtibar. To have an obedience, to have a love, have a respect, and follow the real example of Prophet that look at the mercy, the compassion, the 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 character, the example. Once these only Allah who are kamil and perfected, when we follow them, they teach us. There's no screaming, there's no yelling. I've heard a lot of people say that they love Sayyidina Muhammad when they talk, they're yelling and screaming. That wasn't Prophet Sallallahu example, everything was softly spoken with love and respect. As a matter of fact says that when you raise your voice, shaitan is present. So it means the, the Kamil shaykhs, the perfected shaykhs, if you seek them out, find them, keep their company, kunu ma asadiqeen, Allah says have a taqwa and keep the company of these pious shaykhs, pious guides, pious people. They'll teach you the true character of Prophet soft-spoken, loving, compassionate, their responsibility to carry burdens where people are, are not able to fulfill what needs to be fulfilled. These pious servants are continuously praying for Allah to grant maghfirah, forgiveness, be patient with people. In these days people are running away from so many rules and so many limitations, so many obstacles and difficulties. They're running from the deen and the responsibility of the true ones or to guide people back and talk about the compassion and the mercy of Allah Allah said, وَأَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْطَانِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ That I would not have sent Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, except that he is a merciful creation. So it's a, it's a huge responsibility that to spread the mercy of Prophet and the love, the character and that's why then the shaykhs and the real guides, their majlis, their associations are all about love and muhabbat. Not the physical love of, of only people but the spiritual love of 
If you really love Allah then follow the example of Prophet When you follow the Sunnah and the way of Prophet it's with the akhlaq, with the character. Not that you only wear the clothes and think that you're following the Sunnah, but the Sunnah of Prophet was to be loving and compassionate. To love your wives, to love your children, to have respect, to be soft-spoken. And when you teach people, teach with softness, lower your wings, talk to everybody according to their level, many, many different realities. And then they begin to teach. The Prophet holy hadith, one hadith is enough to govern your entire life. You don't have to tell people tens of thousands of hadith when they don't even follow one. So they come and they tell Prophet describe that who knows himself will know his Lord. So our whole life should be about trying to know myself. Before I talk about Allah and, and, and very high levels of what Allah wants, Prophet is asking me that first know yourself. When you know yourself you'll understand what governs you. And as soon as the student or the seeker of the way begins to make a tafakkur and contemplation is that what you're looking for is not outside. What you're looking for is within your own heart. And you should be busy going into your heart and finding all of the characteristics that are blocking us from these realities. So before they can submit to Allah Most High, they have to take away all of the vices, all the bad characteristics, all the bad issues within their heart that they're really submitting to. They submit to all of these bad characteristics. So then the turuks come and they teach, no, find your heart, go inside your heart, clean all of these bad characteristics out. And that's why all their associations are continuous majlis of zikr of Allah and praising upon Sayyidina Muhammad and begin to open many different realities that as soon as you praise Prophet one time, Prophet Sallallahu promise to us is that Allah will release my soul to come and praise and to raise your status ten times. And only Allah come and teach what does that mean because the world of light has no time. Time is only relevant to this dunya. When Prophet Sallallahu is talking about my soul is going to come to you means this world of light. It comes to you and praises ten times. What type of praise does Prophet Sallallahu put upon your soul? And when does it begin and when does it end? When Prophet Sallallahu is manzil al-Qur'an, means that the Holy Qur'an is emanating from the soul and the reality of Prophet Sallallahu What does that mean? That when Prophet Sallallahu says, I'm going to come and give you ten salawats, ten praisings upon you. So it means the ab, the fastest way for them to grow and to leave bad character is durood al-Sharif and praising upon Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, inshaAllah. Shaykh Nurjan, let's get to our last question. You are a leading Sufi uh, spiritual guide. Please tell us how Muslims can increase the love for their Prophet, may peace be upon him, in their hearts. Because this whole show uh, was on this topic and since this is so important in Islam and for everybody's Iman, that Muslims would want to increase their ishq every day, every hour, every minute. I want to personally ask you on behalf of all those Muslims, what should Muslims do to increase their ishq? Yeah, they don't they actually increase their iman until they love Prophet uh, the station of Iman, Prophet described is that you have to love me. And there was a hadith in relation to Sayyidina Omar, Farooq is that you have to love me, you know, Omar, more than you love yourself. And only Allah come and teach that the station of Iman is not going to be granted until you leave the love of yourself for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and if you are truly searching for the love of Prophet then find those whom remind you of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Means if you're looking for a rose, you go to the rose garden. And in the rose garden you should find many roses. So it means find those whom are already Ashaq Rasul And look with your eyes and look to them and see that, oh, these are Ashaqeen, these are the lovers of Prophet 
Look to see if their ishq and their love gave them good character that reminds you of Prophet Are they merciful? Are they compassionate? Are they loving? Are they generous? Are they kind to women and children? Are they kind to the orphan? All the characters of Prophet if they are and they are ashiqeen and they are from the majlis of zikr that they're continuously remembering Allah they're continuously having mafiz and praisings upon Sayyidina Muhammad and, and making their life for tahzim and Nabi to, to glorify the magnificent status and love that Allah has for Prophet If you find those servants, look for them and sit with them. And this is what Prophet described that if you see a circle of paradise, sit. These are the circles of paradise. Anyone looking for paradise, looking for faith, looking for a better characteristic, sit with those from the people of love and ish. Sit with those from the people of zikrullah, they are the circles of paradise. If paradise is what you want, you should be sitting in the circle of paradise every day or as many days a week as you can. As you accompany them and understand from their teachings, watch their character, don't cheat, don't lie, don't steal, don't be aggressive, don't be angry. That qadab and anger is kufr, is, is the opposite of faith and iman. Then when we begin to sit in those associations, they begin to teach how to love Prophet ﷺ. They begin to give us wazifas and awrads that do lots of zikrullah, do lots of salawats upon Prophet ﷺ so that the nazar and the gaze of Prophet ﷺ to be upon us, to get the attention of Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ upon us, means that which you love and that which you focus on begins to focus upon you. As much as you love Prophet as much as Prophet Nazar begins to come upon that servant. And that's what we pray for, that Allah always to be happy with us and that the Nazar of Prophet to be upon us and to raise us, take away difficulty and bless us with that divinely love and that Allah will love us. فَتَبِعُونِ يُحِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ That Allah will grant us a divinely love because of we love what Allah loves the dearest and the most. Allah's love for Prophet and beyond imagination. InshaAllah. Thank you so much, Shaykh Nur Jan Mir Ahmadi, for being on our show and giving us your time. It was a pleasure having you and also discussing this topic, which is very important for all of us as Muslims. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zain. Allah bless you. Shukran. This was Sheikh Nurjan Mir Ahmadi discussing this important topic of how, how important is Ishq Rasul for our Iman as Muslims. We were discussing this very important topic with Sheikh Nurjan, who is a leading scholar of the Savuf and he is also a spiritual guide. I would like to request all of you to subscribe to my channel which is down below and thank you so much for watching this show. I personally want to thank all my viewers for watching this show because this show for me was something that I really wanted to do for a very long time because this show, this topic as a Muslim was very important to me. This is it from Zain Khan Live. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.